Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with another Fun Stitched Sisters Sewing Project and Classic Time Saving Tips by Nancy Zeman. First, we'll take a look at the project we're making today. We're making our insulated lunch tote from just two coordinating afternoon picnic fabrics from Riley Blake, some Pellon Soft Shape, some Pellon Insel Fleece, and some Pellon Insel Film, and a little bit of Pellon Decoville. We'll also be using a zipper today and a two inch bias tape maker from Clover and Schmet size 90 denim needles. Make lunchtime enjoyable with this stylish insulated lunch tote. And sewing this project is easy with our absolute easiest zipper sewing techniques and a few fabric rectangles. To make our insulated lunch tote, we're, we'll cut some easy fabric rectangles. The first fabric we'll cut is the, from the black floral, and we'll be cutting two three and three quarter inch crosswise fabric strips, and we'll use those for the handles oh, okay. of the insulated lunch tote. We'll cut one 13 by 15 blue gingham, and that'll be for the pocket. The pocket needs a little shape to it. So okay. we'll cut one 13 by 15 Pellon soft shape interfacing. For the tote itself, we'll be cutting one 15 by 30 afternoon picnic fabric, one 15 by 30 Pellon soft shape, one 15 by 30 Pellon insole fleece, one 15 by 30 Pellon insole film, and to give our tote a little bit of shape at the bottom, we'll cut one four by nine fusible Pellon Decoville. Oh, okay, this is fusible. Mm -hmm. One side of it is fusible. Oh, neat. And it gives the bottom of the, the tote shape. Awesome. After we cut our rectangles, we'll be making a pattern. So included in the insulated tote pattern instructions will be tips on how to make the pattern. And it's easy. From our 15 by 30 rectangles of fabric, We'll use our new pattern piece and we'll cut out the tote elements. And you see we cut out the gusset. Mm -hmm. So now we have an interesting looking tote. This is actually the front of the tote and that's the back. Okay. And it will all come together. Even though this side looks much bigger than that side. <laughs> it, it, and you can mix it up. That's why I, I put the front sticker on there because it's, it's so close and it, you could mix it up. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so the first step will be to baste the insole fleece to the back of the outer fabric. So we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll baste all the way around the outside pieces. And it's just the two layers. And you want the silver side facing the back of your it, outer fabric? It could go either way. Okay. You could face it either way. The insulating qualities that keep your lunch cold will work either way. So. Um, I've done it both ways and it doesn't doesn't make a difference. Okay. So then we'll set this aside. We'll go to the sewing machine with that and baste around it, but we still have this mm -hmm. insole film. This will be back later. Once we've stitched the quarter inch basting stitch all the way around the outside edges, we've assembled it into a sandwich. So okay. now it's easier to handle. In the first uh, lunch tote I made, I did not interface this outer fabric, and it sl it slipped and it slid and oh, no. it misaligned. So once I put the interfacing in there, it really stayed together when I did the basting. And take that time and do the basting stitch around mm -hmm. it. It seems like, well, maybe I won't need to do that. It, it keeps all the layers uh, attached together. So the more layers you get, probably the more shifting you're going to have. Right. So I just keep basting along the way. It, it really helps. The next step would be to make the pocket. So we have our rectangle that we've cut for our pocket, and we're going to fold it right sides together. And we're going to stitch along the 15 inch edge with a quarter inch seam. The next pocket has been stitched, but Very it's good. an inside out pocket, and we need to turn it right side out. So we'll turn it the pocket right side out, and this will need a little pressing. Press as you sew, press as you sew, 
and it really makes a different difference and it makes a nice looking project. So at the ironing board, we'll press the pocket and I've already done that with the next pocket and we'll place the pocket two and a half inches down from the top. So use your five and one sliding gauge. One of my favorite measure. tools. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Take your five and one sliding gauge, set it for two and a half inches and make sure that pocket is aligned at two and a half inches from the top. We'll go back to the sewing machine and we'll stitch the pocket. Don't stitch the top of the pocket or you'll sew your pocket shut. Well, you'll have a nice band on the front. <laughs> right, it'll be a nice <laughs> accent band and maybe it was meant to be that way. But we'll baste along that side seam and then uh, we'll turn the corner and put, turn off your basting stitch and go back to your 2.5 okay. standard stitch and stitch. And this is important when you're going through all these layers, that's why we chose the denim Schmetz needle in a 90. We're starting to sew through several layers here and that, uh, that needle makes easy work of it. So a heavy duty needle will go through easier. Right, the, the uh, denim needle is a sharp needle oh, okay. and it's a sturdy needle. So you can go through all these layers and uh, without a problem. Turn the corner, stitch, and then turn the corner and baste. You could, you could leave it at the 2.5, but I, I, re I tend to switch off and on and that uh, creates less bulk in the seams if you can baste it. Oh, okay. On our, our next step, after the pocket is stitched on, is to use a, a six by 24 ruler, which I have here. We're gonna do a little marking. So I found the center of my tote and I've lined it up with a three inch mark. And I have a pin at the center here showing me the center of the, of the uh, bottom of the tote. And we'll do a little marking here. So what we're doing is marking the handle placement. So along the top edge of the ruler and the bottom edge of the ruler or vice versa. We're marking that six inch mark. And I like to use a six by 24 inch ruler because it's six inches and that's the width that we need between our handles. So on the back of the tote, <clears throat> we're going to place another mark. So at three inches from the bottom or the top of the back tote, I'm placing a mark. That's going to tell me where to stop stitching my handles. You don't want to stitch the handles all the way to the top of the tote. My indicator on the front of the tote for handle placement will be to stop stitching at the pocket, at the top of the pocket. So you don't have to mark that one. The next step will be to use some of uh, the crosswise fabric sticks that we cut and make some straps. Size tape straps. And this is the big guy. This is the two inch bias tape maker, but I need to cut my crosswise fabric strips three and three quarters. Okay. If you cut it four, it, it won't fit in there. You need a little space to go in between. Okay. So at the ironing board, we'll press this, advance the bias tape maker, and we'll make handles. It's one continuous length of handles because we've sewn okay. the two crosswise fabric strips and weighed one long loop. So we'll make some bias tape. It's not really bias, they're bias tape makers, but right. these are crosswise fabric strips. And then we'll go to the sewing machine and fold it right side, wrong sides together, and that will give us one inch straps. So from a two inch bias tape maker, we'll make, be able to make one inch straps. At your sewing machine, you'll stitch, you'll top stitch near the edge of both straps. Okay. Before you top stitch it though, you have a seam. You'll have one long length. We need to seam it together after it comes out of the bias tape maker. So then you have a continuous loop. Then you have the loop. That would be a good tip to tell you. Sew the fabric strips into a continuous loop after the they come after. out of the bias tape maker. And then you have a continuous handle. So from two crosswise fabric strips, it makes a nice length for a tote handle. I've marked the center point of the strap. But I, do, I just found the center points by holding it open, marking the halfway points with pins, and that's going to help us place it 
at the bottom of the toe, on the, onto the top of the toe, okay. rather. This is important to make sure you don't have any twists in your handle. I've done that before. Or you'll have a twisty tote <laughs> handle, which would work. It would. And then we'll do some pinning. And you just need a few pins. And, and I did find by pinning this, it's not so easy. The layers are getting really thick. They're just getting thicker and thicker. So what I opted to do, a tip I learned from my friend Nancy, she used a lot of glue and tape in the sewing. She was always a renegade that, <laughs> renegade that way. So on the back of the handles, we'll place some double-sided basting tape. And it really makes this step easier to handle. You don't have to pin through all those layers. Mm. So double-sided basting tape has a paper backing. So maybe on your end, there, I released it. You did. I <laughs> I tore my end, so it's easier if you cut the end. But you'll remove the paper backing, and you'll have a really tacky tape strip. You'll place the center pin marking at the center of the bottom of the tote, and you'll press. What it's doing is acting like um, basting. Instead of putting a whole bunch of pins in, you're tape basting this down. And then I do move my pins, my center point pins. I move them here. As a reminder, and I'm just pinning through the handle layer, as a reminder not to continue sewing because we want our handle you want to, stop. to be free. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't overstitch, right? Mm -hmm. So we have both, we'll have both handles tape basted down, and then we'll stitch. We'll start at the top, across, and we'll go all the way down and stop at that three inches from b below. And that's why we should have a pin there to remind us to stop. So here's a pin. Put that pin at three inches down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sis. That's okay. <laughs> so those are the, place the pins at above the pocket and at three inches in from the top of the back tote and just do a rectangle stop top stitch. And I stitch right over the previous stitched line. Okay. And then that handle is secure. Repeat that rectangle sewing here. And I think our next sample will magically have that done. But we need to give this bag some shape. So we had that one-sided fusible decoville that's going to make this bottom tote have some shape. It'll be more of a stand-up tote. Very good. This is one-sided fusible decoville. And with the heat of an iron, we'll press this in place and use a low temperature on the iron because we have insole fleece. If you have a hot iron on here, you'll melt it. Melt it. The other thing we want to do is use a pressing cloth. So we'll put down the pressing cloth and we'll press this into place. And it doesn't take much. The glue activates uh, pretty quickly. And then that part will be inside the bag. So we'll bring back, we'll bring it out from here, that layer of insole film that we cut before. This finishes the inside of the tote, and it makes it easy to wipe up. So we're going to take Wonder Clips again, and we'll clip all the way around the entire edge, and we'll go back to the sewing machine, and we'll baste. Baste it. All the way around. <laughs> the next step would be for the zipper. This is a tip that I learned from Nancy. Buy a longer zipper. So the tote is 15 inches, but I buy an 18 inch zipper. Okay. And I mark it on the back. On the back of the zipper, I mark it at 15 inches. I'm not uh, automatically finding the 15 inches. I know my tote is 15 inches wide. So you could pull out your tape measure and measure that, or I just use the width of the tote. Okay. So that's marked on the back of the zipper, and we're on the front of the tote. So I'm just going to take the right side of the zipper to the right side of the tote. And you can wonder clip this. With all the layers, Into wonder place. clips are going to make it lay flat right. and not pucker like it would with pins. And it won't bend your pins. Mm. At this point, the layers are getting thick, still um, not difficult to stitch. It's mm -hmm. all straight stitching. But the wonder clips uh, are work where pins don't work so great. So we'll go to the sewing machine and we'll straight stitch. If you can stitch a straight line, you can sew a zipper in with this technique. So once that zipper is sewn into place, we still have a free 
edge of the zipper. Well, that's when we bring up the back of the tote and we pin or wonder clip the zipper to the top of the back tote. And then we'll go back to the sewing machine and sew that. And if we look at the finished lunch tote, while I'm uh, showing this, you can bring out the finished lunch tote. Back to the sewing machine with that zipper foot and stitch all the way along. But once this is sewn, you still have a side seam to sew. Mm -hmm. So go to the sewing machine and wait a minute, that seam is two inches longer. Well, that was intentional. We're going to bring that down and meet the lower seams and then sew those side seams. And what that will do is naturally bring that zipper to the front. So you don't have to worry about the extended zipper tape. Okay. So we'll sew that side seam and down and just there. The other side seam will be sewn and just take caution sewing over that zipper tape. Okay. With a Schmetz denim needle, it'll be a breeze to sew through. Line up at the bottom, start at the bottom and sew off the top. Okay. That leaves a natural gusset. When you turn the tote, it naturally matches. More sewing magic. Mm -hmm. And I, I like fashion fun prints and fun quilting fabric prints mm -hmm. because this this looks a little bit like an astronaut lunch tote right now. It sure does. But let's look at the inside of your tote. And I hope you didn't put your lunch in here. I didn't. I already <laughs> ate it. <laughs> so when we look at the inside of the tote, we can see our side seam and that lower gusset seam is sewn. And the zipper, Tape. We just took a, a craft scissors, not your good scissors, and just cut away that zipper tape. And then when you turn it right side out, with just straight sewing, simple rectangle shapes, mm -hmm. you have a really cute, stylish lunch bag that you can bring to work and all of your sewing friends will be envious of your <laughs> nice little tote. And the fun thing is, with a lunch tote, you need a napkin. You sure do. So go to stitchedsisters.com, watch the tutorial on how to sew a no-hassle napkin, and tuck and go. Three nice little pockets. Three pockets. Visual. Cell phone, fork, and it, it's a nice size, it's a generous size that fits reusable uh, glass lunch containers or plastic sandwich containers. We hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Clover, Pellon, and Schmetz Needles.